Hi folks, I'm Bob Shrub, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. And together we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course. Hey Brad, we're gonna talk about the 10 best hip pain exercises ever created. Say no more, Bob. We're, we're, we're full of braggadocia over here. So, <laughs> by the way, if you are new to our channel, if you're watching this on the rebroadcast on YouTube, please take a second to subscribe to us. We provide videos on how to stay healthy, fit, pain-free, and we upload every day, even on the 4th of July, uh, which we're working today. Brad and I are the hardest working guys in America today. And uh, by the mm. way, can I take a second, Brad, to thank my two nephews? I, I know this is really not uh, a service day to some extent, but... Um, right, but um, it's close. Yeah, I want to thank my nephew, Chase Shrupp, and uh, Gabe Medema for doing their service to our country. Good, so. then, then I'll do that the same with mine for a uh, Benjamin Howard as well as Spencer Howard. One, Ben's in the, na in the Army and uh, Spencer's in the Navy. As a matter of fact, the gentleman who's in the Army is in Hawaii. This kind of flip-flop. Oh, yeah. wow. Tough duty. Yeah, really. <laughs> and uh, Enjoy. if you are on Facebook, please take a second to like us. Brad and I really have this thing where nobody likes us. And anytime yeah. you like us, we feel like somebody appreciates us. Yeah, and then we're happy. All right, let's go ahead and get started, Brad. We can move this out of the way now okay. again. Happy Fourth of July. The first thing you may want to do, this is not even one of the exercises, but especially if you are maybe have a little arthritis in the hip or maybe bursitis, one thing that tends to really, really help is if you use a cane for a while. Right. If, yeah. if it's the kind of pain that hurts consistently when you walk with weight bearing, the cane's going to help significantly, typically. Yeah, and, and it's sometimes, honestly, Brad, I think this helps more than anything else we do. Yeah. And I'm not saying you're going to be using the cane for the rest of your life. All I'm saying is you're going to use it just for a while to calm things down. Sure. And generally, with a cane, you're going to want to use it on the opposite side. Right. Um, so if the pain is on here, you're going to actually use it on this side. You want the cane set to a length where if I put my arm forward like this, um, the, the cane should hit me about on the wrist. Right. So right. this one's too short for right. me, you can see. So you want to lengthen it to the point where if I put it forward, it's, it's, it hits me right on the wrist. There we, there we go. go. With good posture. And now I've got, and, and when you move the foot forward, you move the cane forward. And that's right. real simple and way to use it. You know, when I have people, I, I don't even tell them. I just say, go ahead for a walk with it. And almost always the cane and the foot moves together because that's a natural. You're right. I usually don't even instruct people because right. they, it messes them up. Yeah, exactly. They just naturally. Yep. So use the cane for a while. Then when it starts to feel better, you can stop. Sure. All right. First exercise, Brad. Um, a lot of times what, you know, is really good is just to start getting blood flowing in the, in the hips in the sure. morning. So when you're laying, uh, when you wake up in the morning, first really? thing you do before you even get out of bed, is you just bring your feet up like this and you're gonna gently rock your hips back and forth right. like this. Now, if it hurts in one direction, you know, if it hurts this way, then just work it the other way for a while. Right. And then just bring it back, yep, so he's not even going the other yep. one I'm direction. I'm just working in this direction. But those are nice gargoyle socks, Bob. Yeah, I don't think they're gargoyle, but oh. <laughs> argyle oh, maybe. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so, and then eventually you can work all the way here. But this gets the blood flowing in the morning before you even get out of bed. Sure. Really a good thing to start with. Um, you can also do a, a stretch where you're stretching the hip into flexion. Generally what we have found, if there's a hip problem, quite often there's tightness. And if there's tightness, if you can stretch it at all, any, any gain you make in motion tends to help decrease the pain. We're getting some thumbsies, Brad. Oh, yeah. How about some heartsies? No heartsies yet. We got 11 people on. Oh, there, oh, there goes another thumb. All Better right. Better get on with the program, Bob. All right. So, again, you can do a gentle pressure on, pressure off. Pressure on, pressure off. Now, this should be pain free. If it, if it hurts, you can bump up against the pain, but I don't want you making things worse. Pressure on, pressure off. So, that's into flexion. Now, you can also do it um, with a chair or a stool, you can also just put your foot up on like this and then also pressure on, pressure off. This is just the easy way to do it throughout the day. Just find a good high chair or high stool. For me, I need a high one because I'm very tall. Right. But you go ahead and just go ahead and do the, the, that This is something on, that works off. nice in a stairwell so you can grab onto the handrail and you Excellent. have different levels. That, you know, you can use at either step level. Excellent idea, Brad. Right. All right, the next one, Brad, is a hip flexor stretch. We're stretching this muscle in the front here. And I'm going to grab a pillow. Now, you can do this on the floor. 
So, I don't know, are we catching everything? Are you down there too, Brad? Can yeah, you you're see the good. Pillow? Yeah, hello okay. from Dusseldorf. Hey, how cool is that? Is Michaela, I believe, is how I'm pronouncing it correctly. All right, so now we we got the pillow underneath the knee here, and what you're going to do is keep very good posture, and you're going to stretch forward like this. This one is a universal stretch that everyone should be doing, Brad. You know why? Why? I, you don't know the answer? Because we sit all day, and when we sit, this gets tightened up. And, and that can eventually cause pain. And it also gives you poor posture and it pulls on your back and everything. So you're gonna go ahead and you're just gonna stretch like this. And look at this, you can tell I've been doing this, right Brad? Because look how much motion I got. Right, he, he's got some good flexibility. So, but I'm keeping good posture, I'm not going like this. I'm stretching it like this. Now you can also stretch this on a mat like this. You can put it one foot off like this and I can bend up like this and this really stretches things. You can also even do press-ups like this, and that stretches the hip a little yeah, bit like this, Yeah, that works, too. that hip flexor. That's stretching the back also. Good. H Harrison Shin she, uh, gave us some really nice, kind words about bringing some helpful information to everyone. Thank you. All right, next one, Brad. Uh, hip external rotation. Now, this is an easy one to tell whether or not you're tight. Right. Because all you have to do, you're going to compare your two hips. You're going to put one foot... Uh, or one uh, ankle on your knee, right. and you're going to see how high or how far down you can push this. All right, so if this is up high, well, and then you can go one side to the other. That's the yeah, nice that's what you're going to do. You're going to compare. So and I'll put this one, if it's up like this, this one is tight. Right. So you're going to go ahead and work on stretching this. And, as you, and what's nice about this one, I had a lady that had this trouble, Brad. Mm -hmm. She was getting severe pain with walking. Sure. And this is the only thing we had her do. It took it away. Sure. It was like a miracle. Yep. Sometimes I mean, you, you hit a drain. You get lucky. Head. Yep. And, and all she was doing is, I'd say throughout the day, pressure on, pressure off. Sure. And we like to have you say the words because that tells you how long to push. Right. So you say pressure on, pressure off. Pressure on. Pressure off. Get, Again, it gives you, lets you know. Yep, you get that cadence going. All right. Th this is one I like to do when I'm putting my socks in the morning. I'll go like this, I'll put my socks on, and I'll give it a couple stretches every day. Yeah, it's a good idea. It now, makes it fun. This one's a little bit less common, Brad. Sometimes you can actually stretch it in internal rotation, sure. too. Yep. Uh, you know, you'd have to find a chair and you go ahead and stretch it this way, like this. It is a little awkward. Yeah, I, I don't like doing that one, to be honest. With you. Yeah, let's, let's, uh, let's skip that one. Yeah, we All just right. keep people safe. All right, let's say now you're having some pain yet. We, uh, quite often what is very helpful is to do some type of massage to the area. And one way to do that is to use a foam roller. Now, what we have today here is a different one. Uh, this is called the back baller, believe it or not. And what, what's nice about this is you, can get, you get two rollers here, and plus you can take the, this out and actually use it as a little bit of a foam roller too if you want to. But um, what I'm going to do today is, what I like about this is it's narrower. Because when you have a really long foam roller, it's hard to get into the area here that you want to get into. So I'm, I'm going to, let's say you're having trouble with your hip flexor itself. So you can really target that area by using a device like sure. this. So I can roll over onto it like this. And now you can see I can get right in there, Brad. It's right. really specific to the uh, area. They can't see, Bob. But oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of blocking everything out here, aren't I? Right. How about if I go this way? Now I can. Now right. you can see, right? Yep. So it, that, and that's right where the hip flexor is. It gets in you know, deep and that rolls with it nice and freely. So. Now, quite often, too, people have trouble with on the side it can be the IT band, sure. and it, that attaches to the tensor fascia lata, right. muscle up here. So you want to massage that area too, and again, this works well, well for that. Sure. So you can get right into that area by working right into that. This is nice and stable for this, Brad. Right. It really works well for yeah. that. And you can see he's putting a fair amount of weight through his elbow and his leg because this gets pretty aggressive. And, that's how you're going to control how much uh, massage how much, you're going to do. How much through. pressure you're getting right. on it. Again, this is called the back baller. I'll put a link down below. They sent us one of these. We're not getting paid by these people, but uh, um, you know, we thought it was kind of a cool device. And right. We gave them a little shout out. Sure. All right, another way to go ahead, and, and this is a device that we just showed um, just recently. Sometimes if you take some of those uh, basically uh, power massagers, self-massagers, this is the Nursal. We also uh, showed this in another video. 
but this is just really nice because it's very easy to work on the hip sure. when, you're, when you're working on the, and you're having trouble with some of the muscles here. And you can get very aggressive with this then. Mm -hmm. You can go work around, around the area here. This is, I like, the, one of the things I like about this is a handle. It, it's a nice handle that you can hold comfortably and, and you don't have to get tired fingers even holding it. One of the reasons Brad and I like this one, it was a little, it was a, a little less, ex, a little less expensive. Right. Um, I mean, this one was like thirty-five to forty dollars, depending on, you know, Amazon that day. <laughs> uh, but um, I'll put a link down below for that too. Again, not getting paid by these people, but uh, uh, thought it was a good device. All right, you got to start some strengthening, Brad, to the sure. hip if you're gonna if 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 you're gonna improve things in right. the hip. Well, you want to show. Shallow squats. You want me to do it? Yeah, I want you to do it. Well, I wanted to throw the ball over to you, Bob. All right, you can ah. throw the ball to me. All right. And I'll throw it back ah. to you. And I'll get Facebook. On it. There we go. <laughs> I'll get it down where it belongs. Okay. Oh, there you are. Yeah, just playing a little bit. Okay, so shallow squats, shoulders, make sure the feet shoulder width here, so don't have your feet together. Get them out wide. And don't stand straight up, kind of lean now, back. Margaret Majoric says she's having a lot of pain from her hip to her knee on the outer leg. So that could be that iliotibial band, yep, that, IT, that band. IT band. Right so it's good here. to massage that, right. that whole area and stretch it. Yep. We'll show a stretch for that too sure. before we okay, quit. Okay, good. Got so I'm, I'm going to do shallow squats here, Bob. So we're, we're going about down to here. And when you're doing this, beware that you have to have either some, some footwear that grips to the floor one way or another. Right, because you'll... When you get down to here and your feet slip out, you'll end up on your bottom side, and then uh, that could be an issue. So be, make sure you have that. A nice thing that works good with this, if you have a piece of furniture like this, you can put your hand on for some control if you haven't done this before, or a cane, or something on both sides can be really helpful uh, early on when you're just... Uh, working on these initially. And I can find even with a sore hip, you can do shallow squats sure. generally. Yep. I mean, and it's a great way to start just gently uh, strengthening the hip. Yep. It's really important uh, to start adding that strength component sure. to get rid of the pain. You, you bet. Uh, Tammy Smith said she just shared our video. Let, him, let us, She wants to know, let us know that we are, are appreciated. I wonder where so. she's oh. from. Where are you from? Yeah, Tammy, yeah, you have to let, let us know, know where you're from. Okay. All right. What's All right. It? Next one, Brad. Just doing. Uh, you want to go over to the mat and do some hip abductors? Sure. You know this is really a good one to do too. And it's a common muscle that weakens. Right. Um, this is the one that causes you to, to waddle if you're not. If yeah, it's the not strong enough. Yeah, that trend where yeah, you if you're walking like that. Do that type of a pain will make you do that too, but uh, definitely working on uh, the side to get some strength. Whoa! There goes the cane, Bob. Oh, okay. So I like to put pillow under my ribs there because it's a little more comfortable and you're going to work it just like this bottom leg bent so you got a little more stability if you see your toe and it's pointed up towards the ceiling do not do it that way that's not proper you're going to be much better off to point your toe like this and have your foot parallel to the floor and work it like this and you notice I'm not going real fast although you could they're a little more aggressive but I go up and down good control you know, and you'll feel it right up in here. That muscle is getting tired. Should just be muscle fatigue pain. If you're getting some joint sharp pain, you may not be ready for this yet. Typically, this one doesn't cause any pain. How would you do an IT band stretch, Brad? Good point, Bob. Probably is, just go right to the edge there. Yeah, I'm gonna do it this way with the top leg. Uh, you can do this on a bed. A firm bed would be better. Most people don't have a table like yeah. this, and you're going to go off the back. And don't fall off the, right. off the bed. And look how he's really stretching down. that whole band now. Right through from there. From the hip all the way to the knee. There you go. So, so in addition to doing some like foam roller, or, or you could roll on even a, a tennis ball yeah. or a lacrosse ball. Yep. We have one right there, Brad. Um, that, that'd be a little aggressive. but That'd you be a little aggressive, yep. but you can maybe do the spots that don't hurt right. to stretch those. You know, you're going to roll on. Yeah, you to could them. actually do it by hand, I yeah, guess. Yeah, you could start by, by hand and then, then roll over onto it. I like the six inch it. roller myself. You want to grab one? Yeah. Sure. And but just besides, look at the color of this baby. Yeah. It's a nice one. So, again, if you're getting pain down the side of the hip. Now, sometimes arthritis can just send pain all the way down the hip, down the leg, too. So, yep. you can't rule that out, too. Um, but. If it is the IT band, this is a good one to do right. to, to stretch it. If you use a foam roller on this one, I would suggest you have the, the soft 
intense uh, density. Yeah. If you get the real hard one, it's going to be real aggressive. This one you can yeah, push your finger really into. Yeah, soft. It. Yep. So, all right, those are the 10 things that you can try if you're having hip pain. Brad and I have been at this for 50 some years combined. Combined. And uh, we are, these are the things that tend to, to help our people, our, our patients the most. Right, so, exactly. Um, remember, Brad and I can fix just about anything and we're working on it, but that, oh, nice job, Bob. That, that broken, broken heart. heart. <laughs> so, all right, thanks for Get watching.